Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So it seems like tonight there is not uh, necessarily a conversation that has been started yet. So, um, well, so for this evening, we're going to be working specifically on the topic that would you rather or prefer? That is something that we need to get covered. Um, I know that maybe for now, some of you guys are wondering what is going to happen on Friday after what, um, you know, the news that we have. And uh, we don't know yet because um, Insaforb are the ones who are going to make that decision. But for now, all that we know is that we have to wait for their instructions. Therefore, there's not like a certainty if we're going to have or if we're not going to have classes on, on Friday. It is very likely that we are not going to be having classes, but we don't know yet. So just just keep that uh, or take it with a grain of salt because we don't we're not sure. Like nothing is for sure just yet. However, it is um, you know our best ex expectation that we can um, have the class and to some extent be able to to fulfill the course in this specific or the. the already assigned schedule but we'll see about that that is not something that has to stop us from working tonight um as i said tonight we're going to be dealing with those topics but as per usual we are going to be having the um the question the regular question for for each evening and this time around well um i am thinking that i am going to be asking you guys something kind of personal but also relatively easy to answer. Now, I always like to have a twist when it comes to easy questions. And uh, the question that I have is, what is your favorite color? Some of you guys have already answered this. Um, what will be your favorite color? But the story behind you picking that color. Um, there is always a reason why we always have something um, that maybe has attracted us into liking or not liking something specifically. Therefore, um, for tonight, I would like to know that. What is your favorite color and the um, the thing that has brought you to making that decision or to, to picking that specific choice? Um, so I think the first person to answer this question for tonight is going to be Sandra. So let's hear from you, Sandra your idea or your uh, experience with what is your favorite color and how did you pick that color? Like, um, why is it that that's your favorite? Hello, good evening, everybody. I'm here, so happy again to see you. Um, my favorite color is pink. Okay. Yeah, because, well, uh, when I was uh, 15 years old, I didn't have the opportunity to to wear a, a, a pink dress, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why my favorite color is is pink. Pink. So after you didn't have your quinceañera, uh, <laughs> you decided that you were gonna like pink for the rest of your life. Yes. Okay. Pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Okay, very good. Nice to know. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Okay, now let's hear from Joaquin. How about you, Joaquin? What is your favorite color and how did you pick that color? Excelente. Uh, el micrófono se, se, se muteó en lo que estaba empezando a hablar. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Okay, teacher. Every, good evening, everybody. Um, my favorite color is the green. It's green. <laughs> okay. And how did you come to like that color? Or why is it that green is your favorite color? Uh, because uh, is um, um, in in the no sé no sé cómo se dice semáforo. <laughs> oh, traffic light. A traffic light is is green. It, it permits um, to go out or to go uh -huh. or continue the the journey. The the the. Yes. The... yes. Okay, very good. So because it is in the traffic light, and the best word to say that it will be because it allows. Yes. Sí. Eso se escribe con O, pero se, se pronuncia como si fuese una A. Se dice, me, allows. Uh -huh. For me, it's uh, very important 
to represent um, 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 how do you say esperanza? <laughs> Hope. 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 Yes. Yes. Hope. Mm -hmm. Hope. Okay. Yes, Hope. that is also right. Yes. Yeah. I know. I know that many people sometimes they say that they like many colors. In my case, I mean, I like them all probably, but there is one thing that I know for sure, and it is that I have changed my favorite colors so many times in my life. However, I think this is my longest period with having a favorite. Uh, an already established color, which is burgundy. Before, I was such a fan of the green, but now I'm just like there, there, you know. Like I like green, but it's not my top favorite. Like I think I have like five colors that will come before green nowadays. But yeah, green is a very, very nice color yes. because it is also part of nature. Like you see it everywhere, you know, on trees, on any kind of plant, grass. And many things that are natural are color green. So that is also a very nice reason to have green as a favorite color. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, let's hear from Rosa Maria. How about you, Rosa Maria? What is your favorite color? And how did you choose that one as your favorite? Hi, good evening. My favorite mm -hmm. color is Pink because when I check, I remember that I see a princess in Barbie. Oh, okay. Because princesses and Barbies will wear pink, you started to like pink. Very nice. Nice. That sounds like a really nice story, also. Um, you know, for the reason why you like your favorite color. Very, very good. Um, how about the case for Eduardo? What is your favorite color and how did you come to like that one? Okay, my favorite color is, is blue. Uh, I remember I was, my mom, I, I buy jeans, um, the color blue. Mm -hmm. That is this, um, uh, the boys, I, I like it, the color. All right. Very nice. Because of jeans. I have a similar story because in my case, the, 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 the thing that brought burgundy to be my favorite color, burgundy is like a version of maroon. Like, um, it's not, como sería? Like ochre. Yeah, that's like the, the, the burgundy color. Um, yeah. But the, the reason why I like that color is because I bought, for me, the perfect pair of shoes uh, when I was in the U.S., and I remember that this that color will go with anything. Like if I was wearing white, I think the burgundy shoes will fit perfectly. If I was wearing blue, for example, it will fit well. If I was wearing gray, green, any color will fit great with, with the burgundy. And that's the reason why I started to like the color. Um, now my backpack and many things that I have are colored the same, burgundy. The only sad things is the only sad thing is that I don't have uh, um, burgundy shoes anymore because, of course, you know, shoes are to last someday, and yeah, they lasted. But yeah, uh, so I take you, I take your idea, you know, that your favorite color comes from a piece of clothing. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, let's hear from Patricia. How about you, Patricia? What is your favorite color, and how did you come to like that color? Uh, hello, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, my favorite color is uh, blue. Um, in well, because I identified it with sea and and the, the sky. sky, and um, it gives me uh, some quiet peace or. Uh, Tranquility. Tranquility. Yeah. Tranquility. Yeah. Tranquility. Yes. I mean, I think that maybe you have heard of this before, Patricia. Uh, I think I don't I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the in the class that we had before. But they say that blue is a proper color to use on public transportation or things like that. Because it transmits, you know, those those feelings that you mentioned, like peace or calm or tranquility. Um, that is a very weird, weird word to, to pronounce. But 
the thing is that people, when they are um, traveling, let's say by bus, by train or by plane, which are like the main um, mass transportation means that we have, people tend to feel um, stressed or not at ease. But when you have blue, like the likes on those on those transportation means are normally blue. When you have that color being used, that makes people feel more calm. If you had, for example, green, they say that green is too active of a color. Like if you see green, normally it comes with like, um, like like a more vibrant um sphere to it. Red is basically the same. Red can also even get people to to be aggressive. So blue is like a perfect color to do that to express tranquility or to um just to make somebody feel um. At, like in peace the same happens or like there is a, a huge recommendation for like when people have babies if you can paint the um the room of the baby light blue not necessarily blue but light blue that is also going to help like with keeping that peaceful environment in the baby's room that's only like an advice it's not that i know but i have read you know about about that so yeah very good thank you very much patricia you're welcome Okay, now let's hear from Janet. How about you, Janet? What is your favorite color and how did you come to like that specific color? Well, um, all my life, uh, my favorite color is uh, pink because it's cute and all, I have many, many things that are of this color, but uh, from some one years, uh, maybe three years, I like too much uh, purple too, because I stand uh, on a boy band of South Korea. Mm -hmm. Then this color is too much representative of this band because uh, they, um, for example, uh, say to, to their uh, fans, I purple you mm -hmm. uh, to say, I love you, for example. Um, and it's a color too much powerful to me. Uh, and and it, this is and this is the, the reason. Okay, very good. Um, what is the boy band, by the way? BTS. Yeah, I will I was assuming so because my sister calls me that. My sister sometimes she tells me I purple you with the sign, you know, the yeah. regular sign for them. Yeah, so that's um <laughs> sometimes in the morning she's like, I purple you, or whenever she has done something mean to me. She's like, I purple you still. So yeah, I, I I assumed it was BTS. However, she likes many bands. So I was like, probably it's another one, the one that says I purple you. And I don't know, but okay, nice. Very, very nice. And yeah, I know that um, purple is a very important color for them. I also love the pink albums that they have, mostly Persona, that's uh, like, or Map of Soul Persona. Those were probably my favorite albums i have bought my sister two of those and my girlfriend one of them, one i think yeah one i bought i bought one for her and one she bought herself but yeah um it is it is great so thank you thank you very much for sharing You're okay welcome. how about the case for um ailey what is your favorite color and how did you come to like that color Hello, good evening. Hello there. Uh, my favorite color is purple because purple was my dress uh, for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> nice pair. Yeah. <laughs> Aquí vengo, dijo. <laughs> Me encanta ser centro <laughs> So, because of your dress for your 15? Yes. <laughs> oh, cool. Very nice. Yeah. And I also think purple, they say, I don't know, I'm not sure because I, I, I'm only 26. I haven't lived, you know, forever. But they say that purple is one of the hardest colors or was one of the hardest um, colors to, to make back in the day, um, like in the Middle Ages. See? Um, when there was like a lot of like uh, importance on the crowns in the world, mostly for England. So 
as purple was so hard to make or to 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 obtain from nature because many colors for example red or blue or green are easily um, gotten or gathered from nature. There are, there are many things in nature that are those colors. However, purple is very weird to find in nature. Um, that became the, the color of um, the royalty, like of people, you know, the ones who, who are supposed to be part of the, like um, castles and things like that, people who are rich. Um, so purple represented a lot of that, a lot of like uh, the richness of, of the communities and the richness of the families. Therefore, purple, to some extent, also represents um, fanciness. Like when you are fancy, you are uh, or ought to wear purple. Okay, but uh, thank you guys very much for sharing that. I think we are going to be moving into the topic for tonight. Thank you for um, the ones who have shared, the ones who didn't have the chance. Well, hopefully in another day, we're going to have some time for you guys. So today, class number seven, um, now that we have more people, I have to uh, spread the word once again. Uh, we're not sure about the class for, um, for Friday. It is very likely that we're not having a class, but uh, we're going to keep you guys posted because just now, like two minutes ago, Jimmy, the one who is in charge of it all, he was telling us, just spread the word that Insafor is making the decision. They are still um, like trying to figure out whether they're they are going to be able to have the class or not. So uh, please wait. If anything happens during the during the um, the class, I will make sure that I let you know. But um, as I said, it is very, 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 very likely that we're not having a class on Friday. But we'll see. Okay. So we'll rather or we'll prefer. Here we have the rules to use this. So we'll rather takes the base form of the verb would prefer usually takes an infinitive. Both are followed by not in the negative form. For example, I would rather watch a movie than soccer. This is by using rather. I would prefer to watch a movie than soccer. Now, the meaning of them both it is very similar. As I said yesterday, there is not a huge difference. You can use either of them like almost interchangeably. Now, the only time when you're going to have to be careful which one you're going to be using is when you ask questions. But if it's only a, a sentence, like a regular sentence, and you're trying to establish what is your favorite from two or more things, um, you can use either of them. You can use rather or prefer. The only thing you have to remember, of course, is that for prefer, you have to add the particle to right after prefer. And when you are going to use rather, you don't have to do that. You only have to mention rather and then the things that you um, have to pick from. Now, also very important, you have to remember that whenever you use either of them, you have to mention the thing that you like better first. And then you're going to leave like the second option or the thing that you don't like much as the second um, thing you mention. So, for example, if you were to pick between, um, let's say, would you rather have a bicycle or walk to work every day? And if you say that you would rather walk, then you have to say that first. I would rather walk, walk sorry, than ride a bicycle. If you would rather to ride a bicycle, you will have to say that first. I would rather ride a bicycle than walk to work. Therefore, um, please make sure that you remember that you establish that difference and you mention first the thing that you like better and then the thing that you don't like too much. Um, of course, here we have the use of then. This is uh, a word that we normally use only when we're establishing like a superiority, like things that are superior to another thing. Um, the same that, that you do when you use comparative words, if you remember. When you use comparatives, um, for example, we say that uh, Jonathan is faster than Rodrigo. So there you have, you're making a comparison and you're saying that Jonathan has this quality in a wider or broader um, sense than Rodrigo does. Therefore, you are establishing that Jonathan is to some extent better than Rodrigo, at least when it comes to being fast. Um, same here, you are establishing 
that this section is your favorite uh, against this one over here, the case of the soccer uh, being your least favorite or something that you will not prefer to do. So please remember also that you have to use it. Sí, es, 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 esta es como la escalera, ¿verdad? Que nos va a ayudar a establecer esa descendencia. Primero tenemos o sea, el escalón normal donde vamos a mencionar aquello que nos gusta, lo que nosotros preferimos, y luego estará rather, o sea, mencionamos eso, luego decimos then, y es como bajar un escalón, ¿verdad? O sea, then es para poder establecer que eso está más abajo en cuestiones ya de gusto o preferencia, lo mismo, como les mencionaba, con los adjetivos eh, comparativos cuando utilizamos el caso de decir, ¿verdad? Jonathan es más rápido, ¿sí? En este caso es al revés, es como la subida la que se hace, ¿verdad? O si no, lo mismo. O sea, si ustedes si lo quieren poner así, ya que se menciona anteriormente a Jonathan, pueden decir que Jonathan está en este nivel y Rodrigo está en este nivel más abajo, ¿sí? Jonathan es más rápido que Rodrigo. Entonces es como si vamos descendiendo, ¿verdad? Y luego, por ejemplo, en los comparativos se puede seguir haciendo mucha más larga la escalera. Ustedes pueden seguir diciendo, um, however, Rodrigo is faster than Julia. Julia is faster than Maria. Maria is faster, and, and like that, ¿sí? Ustedes van a ir como que descendiendo. Si, si gustasen hacerlo de esa forma, se puede hacer sin ningún problema. Pero siempre utilizando el dan, que es lo que marca esa diferencia, ¿verdad? Entre lo que es mejor o preferido. Y aquello que no necesariamente eh, tiene quizá las mejores características a mencionar. Ok, now, would, rather, uh, would you rather, sorry, would you rather take a media class or a health class? Now, um, we normally use would also with rather, ya que lo que estamos haciendo aquí es hablar acerca de como posibilidades. O sea, no siempre, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando acerca de cosas fácticas. Si hablamos acerca de cosas fácticas, claramente, o sea, cosas que ustedes están 100% seguros que así son, no necesitaríamos utilizar el would. Sí, o sea, si por ejemplo, eh, esto fuese como un comentario así al aire de que yo estoy estableciendo mi preferencia, entonces yo digo, I'd rather watch a movie than soccer. Eso significa yo prefiero ver... Um, una película que, que fútbol, ¿verdad? Es solo un comentario acerca de mi preferencia. En cambio, en este, I would rather, es más que todo utilizado cuando estamos, eh, digamos que estamos haciendo planes, ¿sí? Con, con, con un grupo de amigos, por decir algo, y alguien está sugiriendo que veamos un partido de fútbol. Pero entonces yo quiero establecer mi preferencia y para usar un poco de respeto también y además establecer que esto es en esa posibilidad, o sea, que no es un hecho, utilizo el would, ¿sí? I would rather watch a movie than soccer. Se puede utilizar el would si yo solo estoy haciendo un comentario acerca de mi preferencia sin que necesariamente sea el tema de conversación. Sí, se puede. Tampoco es que sea un problema. Pero no es necesario cuando es ese caso específico, ¿verdad? Si yo solamente estoy... Um, qué sé yo, con alguien y me pregunta, ¿verdad? ¿Qué prefiero hacer los sábados por la tarde? Entonces, yo no diría necesariamente I would rather porque no voy a estar faltando el respeto a nadie si yo solamente digo directamente I rather um, spend the whole afternoon watching TikTok than studying English. Sí, o sea, entonces, esa sería la preferencia de alguien y no tiene problema con que lo diga. Ahora, diferente si yo como maestro les digo, ¿será que tenemos clase el sábado en la tarde? Entonces ustedes pueden decir ahí ya, como tratando de esa farsa, de esa posibilidad, ¿verdad? Decir, I would rather not, or I would rather uh, spend my whole Saturday with my family instead of being in a class. Entonces eso es como para poder uh, establecer un poco de respeto y también porque estamos hablando acerca de una posibilidad. En cambio, cuando son cosas ya establecidas, cosas que nosotros estamos seguros, que así nos gustan y que además es solamente un comentario que estoy haciendo acerca de mi preferencia, no habrá necesidad de utilizar el would. Ahora, en las preguntas siempre se usa would. ¿sí? Would you rather... Um, take a media class or a health class cuando utilizamos rather ¿verdad? ahora diferente sería, o sea, se puede utilizar otra pero es más larga uh, what do you sorry what do you rather do what do you rather do 
take a, take a media class or a health class, ¿sí? O sea, es un poquito distinto, ¿verdad? What would do you rather do? O sea, ¿qué prefieres hacer? Pero esto es otra vez hablando acerca de momentos o cosas ya eh, establecidas, cosas que ya han sucedido, cosas que suceden, o sea, como en, en la vida cotidiana de alguien. Patricia. Uh, yes, teacher. Uh, in the previous uh, slide, uh -huh. uh, uh, there were two, uh, there were two sentences. Uh -huh. I would rather watch a movie than soccer, and I would prefer to watch a movie than soccer. In the first case, we didn't use to. Uh -huh. Exactly. With rather, when you use rather, and that's the, aquí está la, la, la regla, sí. Uh, would rather takes the base form of the verb. Sí, o sea, se utiliza la base, la base o la forma básica uh -huh. del verbo. Would prefer, sí. Takes an infinitive. Cuando okay. hablamos en infinitivo, ¿verdad? Sabemos que es cuando se le agrega el to. Entonces, would prefer takes an inf the infinitive form. Eso es algo que se ve en ocasiones okay. en... You're welcome. Se ve en ocasiones en, en gramática. Por ejemplo, cuando um, utilizamos los gerundios, ¿verdad? Que es muy común. Al, al, al otro día veíamos eso. Que después de need, por ejemplo, o sea, y need repairing, ahí utilizamos un gerundio. No va a ser tan común que digamos needs to be repaired, o sea, es más raro, ¿verdad?, que se vea de esa forma. Es lo mismo con este caso del rather, ¿sí? O sea, el rather, la regla de él es que justo después de rather se va a colocar la forma base del verbo. En cambio, justo después de prefer se va a tener que utilizar una forma en infinitivo. Ok. Ahora, lo que les decía anteriormente, ¿verdad? Con las preguntas, es que si nosotros queremos dejar de utilizar el would, la pregunta debería funcionar de esta forma. What do you rather do? Pero cuando preguntamos así, what do you rather do? Es con algo, o sea, que la persona, como les decía, ya lo tiene como parte de su rutina, parte de su vida, parte de las cosas que le gusta hacer sí o sí. Um, esto puede ser, o sea, referido... Uh, por ejemplo, lo que, el ejemplo que les decía antes. What do you rather do? Spend the Saturday with your family or take English classes? ¿Sí? ¿Qué prefieren hacer? El, eh, 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 es pasar el fin de semana con su familia o tomar clases, ¿verdad? Eh, específicamente, pues, en el fin de semana. No hay necesidad de mencionarlo otra vez. Ahora, eso es para poder conocer su opinión de lo que ustedes ya hacen. Pero el would se usa para las posibilidades, ¿sí? O sea, para cosas que eh, no necesariamente han sucedido, ¿sí? Entonces, por eso, ¿verdad? Utilizamos would. Es para posibilidades. Would you rather take a media class or a health class? Nadie les está diciendo eh, que ustedes están tomando una de las, de las dos específicamente ahora, sino solo es para conocer su opinión acerca de qué les gustaría, ¿verdad? Ahora, Digamos que vamos a hablar acerca de, de pedir comida, ¿sí? Would you rather order a pizza or a salad? ¿Sí? No, vamos a hablar, hablar de esto mejor. An impossible burger. Yes. Would you rather order a pizza or an impossible burger? What would be your choice? Ustedes qué, qué elegirían? Would you rather order a pizza or an impossible burger? What do you think, um, Joaquin? I rather I rather eat pizza. You rather eat pizza? Okay. Yeah. Yes. I would rather a pizza too. Pizza. I I'd rather choose a salad. <laughs> Ya había puesto, iba a poner salad, pero cambié porque ya les, no sé si ya saben a qué se refiere las Impossible Burgers, right. pero dígame, Joaquín. I, I rather pizza. Pizza, ok. Um, let's say, Sandra, what would you rather have, a pizza or an Impossible Burger? I would like, uh, no, I would rather pizza, uh, pizza. 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 Okay, Walter. What is impossible burger, teacher? Okay, I was waiting for someone to ask that. An impossible burger is a project that people are doing in the U.S. And it is yeah. not, no longer a project. I think nowadays yeah. it's a reality. It's something available for like almost anyone. Um, an impossible burger is a burger made out of vegetables. Only oh. vegetables. 
Yes. So all it's you're going diet, to diet a diet hamburger. Basically. So you're <laughs> uh, eating vegetarian. Veget 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 vegetarian. Italian. Yes, vegetarian <laughs> burger. To some extent, <laughs> it's vegetarian. It looks like a burger, and what you're eating. It's um, like a mix of soy with, I don't know what else, but like many things. And when you try it, it tastes like a burger. But yeah. what you're eating, it's only vegetables. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice idea, a nice idea. Impossible burger. Sí, o sea, yeah. es, una, es una hamburguesa que no utiliza carne. Se supone que, o sea, esta puede ayudar para diferentes cosas, ¿verdad? Primero que nada, el ambiente es como la idea detrás de todo, el, el dejar de depender tanto en, en los cattle, o sea, en el, el ganado. Luego, para la, las cuestiones de salud, o sea, ustedes están comiéndose algo que sabe a hamburguesa, pero que no les va a causar los mismos daños, porque son vegetales todo, todo lo que están consumiendo. Um, lo único que creo que no necesariamente es tan, tan, tan súper mega saludable del Impossible Burger es aquellos que le ponen queso y también cuando deciden utilizar el um, pan, ¿verdad? Que sea distinto, porque, o sea, normalmente hacen el pan, ahorita no me acuerdo de qué es el pan, pero es de un, de un vegetal también. Entonces, pero todo, 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 lo, parece que de... Teacher. De linaza. Teacher. Pan de linaza. Creo que sí, pero también, perdón, ya voy, creo que también lo hacen con esta cosa, ¿cómo es que se llama el blanco? Ah, siempre me reclamo en la casa que no se sabe el nombre, coliflor. Sí. Mm. Oh, mm. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, it's extraño, wow. pero sí, impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> so yeah, but they made it possible. Dígame, Joaquín. If we use um, uh, meat of of soya, mm -hmm. soy 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 meat, soya, mm -hmm. soya meat. Yes, it is not the same. I mean, people like soy tacos. You know, I, 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 I try them, but I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, but yeah, it is. I mean, that's basically what they do with Impossible Burger. They make soy beef. Um, that's why they, what they call it. Oh, yeah. Beans. See, ¿sí? los típicos frijoles. Eso es lo otro que usan. Además de la soya, usan frijoles. Además de los frijoles, no me acuerdo qué, pero usan otra, otra, otro, otra legumbre. Que Garbazos. Hace... Creo que también garbanzos que hacen, o sea, que la carne, la carne, entre comillas, tenga esa textura, ¿verdad? Como si fuese carne molida de verdad. Así uh -huh. que es un tema que es bastante interesante. Ya hace tiempo, de hecho, están desarrollando o han desarrollado esto. Se supone que hoy hasta en cadenas de supermercado ya se vende. Uh -huh. Antes, o sea, solo se vendía en ciertas tiendas en California. Pero ya hoy se supone que ya es algo como común, digamos, la Impossible Burger. Pero la idea detrás de eso es eso, ayudar a las personas que, que son eh, vegetarianas, hasta cierta medida, experimentar lo que, lo que significa comerse una hamburguesa, ¿sí? Obviamente, tal vez para los vegetarianos no fue la mejor noticia, ¿verdad? Porque toda la idea detrás de eso es, o sea, no comer carne y te están tratando de invitar a comer algo que se parece a la carne. Así que es como que no fue muy famoso con los vegetarianos, pero... Aquellos a los que les gustan las hamburguesas y tal vez tienen problemas de salud, pues fue una muy, muy buena noticia para ellos. Así que sí, Impossible Burger. Ok, entonces, cuando ustedes tienen una decisión que tomar de esa forma, lo pueden establecer de esta forma, miren, utilizando el, el, la contracción, sí, I'll, I'll, I'll rather take a media class. In your case, you guys were saying, I'll rather order order pizza or order a pizza. See, I'll rather order a pizza. I'll rather not take either. See, I'll rather not order. Digamos aquí ya que cambiamos el, ver el verbo. I'll rather not order either. See, preferiría no ordenar ninguno. O sea, cuando ustedes no tienen ninguna de las dos. Por el caso de Patricia, she would rather have a salad. See, I'll rather not order either. I would prefer, digamos, en ese caso, si ustedes utilizan el rather en la, en la primera oración de forma negativa, pueden cambiarse a utilizar prefer en la siguiente. Pueden decir, I would prefer to have a salad. ¿Sí? I would rather not order either. I would prefer to have a salad. Uh, then I would rather take another course than study media and health. Um, aquí lo mismo, ¿verdad? I would rather order a salad Dan, order a pizza or a burger. Sí, entonces existen esas diferentes formas en las cuales ustedes pueden establecer su opinión o 
también expresar cuál de los dos les puede gustar, si no les gusta ninguno. Hay siempre, ¿verdad?, variaciones para poder explicarlo. Pero ese sería uno de los usos comunes para rather, ¿sí? Ahora, con prefer, si recuerdan aquí, se fijan, ¿verdad?, um, rather order, ¿sí? Rather order. Con prefer sería prefer to study, ¿sí? Diferente, por ejemplo, si yo aquí dijese, would you prefer prefer order a pizza, eso no tendría to sentido, order. sino que tendría que ser to order, to order, exactamente. Would you prefer to order a pizza or an impossible burger? Sí, vamos a dejarlo así y, uy, perdón, eh, llegamos a esto. Would you prefer to study film studies or broadcasting? Es muy similar lo que vamos a hacer a la hora de contestar, no va a haber una gran diferenciación, pero lo que vamos a tener que recordar Siempre es la utilización del infinitivo, que será el mencionar to, ¿verdad? I'll prefer to study film. I'll prefer not to study it either. ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Recuerden eso, que también cuando utilizamos una versión negativa, el negativo va así, solo como not, justo después de mencionar ya sea rather o prefer. ¿sí? I'll prefer not to study either. Si ustedes, por ejemplo... Eh, Digamos, alguien les, les ofrece la, una salida. Si les dicen, por ejemplo, digamos, ustedes están calmados en su casa viendo una película y les ofrecen ir al boquerón, let's say. Si ustedes no quieren ir, solamente pueden decirlo hasta acá. I prefer not. ¿sí? Preferirían no hacerlo. I prefer not. Entonces, o oh, I'd rather not. Ahora, cuando se usa eso, eh, I'd rather not, tiene una connotación distinta. Si ustedes utilizan al prefer not, están exp expresando solo su preferencia. Al rather not, eh, lo que están queriendo decir ustedes es como que, o sea, preferirían no hacer eso, pero dejan la puerta abierta a otra, a otra opción, ¿sí? Y ahora, la connotación secreta, por decir así, que existe detrás de utilizar rather not, es también... Um, se puede utilizar cuando ustedes tienen como esa desconfianza, ya sea del lugar o del momento, o sea, corazonadas, digamos. Cuando tengan una corazonada, ustedes pueden, se utiliza ese, I'd rather not, ¿sí? Es como preferiría no hacerlo y no necesariamente tienen que explicarlo, ¿verdad? Pero es común que cuando alguien no se sienta del todo conforme con un plan, utilice el rather que prefer, o sea, porque prefer directamente expresa tu preferencia, en cambio, rather, hasta, alguna, hasta algún sentido, deja un poco abierta la puerta para poder recibir otro ofrecimiento. Entonces, eh, esa también sería una, una diferencia que existe entre los dos. Pero si, si ustedes, como les digo, dicen, I'd rather not, es como, prefiero no hacerlo por otros motivos, digamos. Um, si la persona les ofrece, then would you, would you prefer to go to la costa? And you say, okay, let's go. Yeah. Y Patricia, ¿cuándo? ¿A qué hora? Vamos a marchar allá mañana. Okay. And uh, here we have, I prefer to study another course than study, um, sorry, prefer to study another course than study film studies or broadcasting. Lo mismo, ¿verdad? O sea, ofrecemos una opción distinta. Podemos aquí, en lugar de decir another course, podemos mencionar directamente el curso que preferiríamos estudiar. Podríamos decir, I prefer to study mathematics, ¿sí? Alguien que le guste la matemática, than study film, uh, film studies and broadcasting. Entonces, esas serían las, las diferencias. Ahora, ¿conocemos el significado de broadcasting? Yes, teacher. Yes. Transmitir. Yes, okay. pronóstico. Ah, ambos significados de hecho son utilizados, ¿sí? El broadcast puede funcionar para hablar acerca de un pronóstico y también para hablar acerca de la transmisión, o sea, cuando se hace, ¿verdad? Una transmisión. Um... Forecasting, forecast, es otra, es decir, pronóstico. Es cierto. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Forecast es, es forecasting, Sandra. Nos acaban de... Sí, es forecasting el del pronóstico. ¡Oh! For, esto sí, forecasting. I, sí, I, 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 
I'll come home. Please. For forecast. <laughs> Cierto. Thank you very much, um, Walter. Welcome. Ok, so yes, broadcasting es para la transmisión. Es que tiene otro, pero ¿cuál es el otro significado de broadcast? Broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. Sé que hay otro, pero no recuerdo ahorita. Bueno, maybe I should try that. This is another conversation that we have. I think this one we're going to be practicing it right away. It's very short, so it's not going to take us a very long time. Um, so we have as well two people, Wong Yu and Kelly. Those are the two people being part of this conversation. Uh, okay, tell me, Janet. Um, sorry. Uh, Google says broadcasting is radio difusión. Yes. Radio difusión o transmisión, digamos. O sea, la, la, la general, la, 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 ¿cómo sería? La descripción o traducción o interpretación general es la transmisión. Sí, o sea, el hecho de, por ejemplo, en su teléfono, no sé si ustedes alguna vez lo han utilizado, pueden hacer, ¿verdad? Broadcast de su teléfono al televisor. O sea, si ustedes quieren ver YouTube o alguna aplicación específica que puedan utilizar Netflix, digamos, desde su teléfono a la tele, pueden hacerle el broadcasting. O sea, y yeah. eso significa que están transmitiendo, ¿verdad? La información o, o, qué sé yo, específicamente el video, película, de mantenerlo, el control en su teléfono, pero visualizarlo en la televisión. Lo mismo para la radio transmisión y lo mismo también para la transmisión a través de la televisión y también se utiliza hoy en día cuando hablamos acerca de cosas de internet. O sea, si es algo, una transmisión en vivo, eh, normalmente se le, se le coloca, ¿verdad? Ese, ese eh, logo de live broadcast. Hoy solo ya se, se recortó a solo decir live nada más, pero... Ajá, pero lo podríamos también... Um, entender como esto transmisión en vivo sí a live broadcast ok eh, bueno como les decía anteriormente entonces la conversación tenemos a Wong Yu and Kelly the way it should be developed is as following so how's your French class going not bad but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult well it takes a while to get it right you could improve your accent by listening to language CDs That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Maybe I should try that. Oh, sorry. Maybe I should try something like that. Maybe I should try something like that. Okay, uh, before we get to talk about the conversation itself, I would like to know, how do you guys do to practice the vocabulary? How do you um, normally learn new words? What are some strategies that you have? Um, for example, uh, since a couple of months to, to now, I write my um, schedule, Mm -hmm. All in English. Cool. Yes, that is a very, very good way to do it. As the advice that I give almost all the time to have your phone in English. You know, when you mm -hmm. have your phone yeah. in English, the thing that you use like almost all the time, or do your searches in English. Like in my case, most of my searches, when I'm looking for something, I look for it in English. I read it in English and then if I need some specific information, I might look for it in Spanish. But if you looked at my uh, my Google my uh, official Google, it will always pop up English results, um, results before Spanish results. Okay, someone else, yeah. for example, you, Walter, how do you do? How, um, how um, you follow, um, follow some TikTokers. Uh, they always give me uh, new phrases or new words and try to memorize and try to apply all the day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. I I um, talk with my dog in, in English, or when go in my car, um, try to repeat by myself. Yeah, yeah. I do that. 
yeah. I do that when I go I look, to the bathroom. I look like crazy sometimes. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> Believe me, you don't. Yeah. You don't because that is the best way to do it. I do yeah. it when I go to the bathroom. Sometimes I'm yeah. I'm, I'm by myself in the bathroom and yeah. I'm creating a monologue, like explaining this or that in English just so I can yeah. I can figure out how to use the new words that I have learned. Yeah. So yeah. yes, sure. doing monologues is very, very proper, I think, yeah. to practice. Yes, Joaquin? I I prefer uh, to learn associate um, things of words. Hmm. Yes, that is another way. Yeah, yes. like the creating a link between the two things, you know, the meaning and the word. So mm -hmm. yeah, for example, yesterday, I don't know if you guys know about that, but my dad asked me to go and get some carburo because here we have um, plantains near my house. Yeah. And he wanted me to, to buy that. But I always forget the name of that thing, like all the time. It is the second time that I had to go and get it, but I always forget what's the, the name for it. Um, so what I did is that I started to link it with gasoline, you know, yes. like hydrocarburos. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, if I think of gas, I might remember it. Because I was, I, I, yesterday night, I think I was saying... Uh, I forgot the word, pero estaba diciendo una palabra que ni por cerca se parecía carburo. Entonces yo le pregunté, papi, ¿cómo es que se llama eso otra vez? Le dije, se me olvidó de nuevo. Y él me dijo, carburo. Ah, ok. So that's what I have to get. Bueno, ahora, esta conversación la vamos a practicar ahorita. Sí, así que no vamos a hacer práctica, ¿verdad? Acá en vivo. Eh, pero igual, lo que yo les digo también, que creo que lo mencionó más o menos Walter, es el hecho de practicar, ¿verdad? O sea... Cada vez que se pueda, digamos que durante el día, como siempre les he comentado, ustedes están camino a su trabajo, camino a, a la escuela, qué sé yo, eh, y si ven cosas que se relacionen con las palabras que ustedes conocen, tratar de identificar esas cosas no en español, ¿verdad? sino que en inglés, y asimismo ser curiosos. Si veo algo nuevo, ¿cómo se dice eso? Sí, o sea, yeah. ¿cuál es el nombre para eso? No recuerdo cómo se dice. Y el siguiente día, si pasamos por el mismo lugar, tratar de aplicarlo. Es tipo, oh, ayer yo no sabía cómo se decía semáforo, pero ahora yo sé que se dice traffic light. Sí. Ayer yo no sabía cómo se decía, um, qué sé yo, parada de bus, sí. pero ahora yo sé que se dice bus stop. Sí. O sea, es algo bastante mm -hmm. sencillo, ¿verdad? Ayer no sabía cómo se decía eh, elefante y hoy ya sé que se dice elephant. Entonces, así vamos a ir generando, ¿verdad? Ese enlace entre las cosas que, que vemos y además las palabras que nos estamos aprendiendo. Bueno, entonces, esta conversación, espero que ya tengan sus capturas. Vamos a movernos en este momento a los breakout rooms, ¿sí? Para practicar un poco. Y pues, aparentemente no vamos a tener noticia antes de terminar la clase acerca del viernes. Pero como les decía, lo más probable es que se cancele porque, um, pues... Es verdad, una cobertura hasta universidades, entonces difícilmente uh, nos escapemos de, de tener la clase. Si es el caso, creo que lo que va a pasar es que vamos a tener clase toda la semana, la próxima semana, lo cual por mí no es problema. Así que bueno, eh, ahorita ya están habilitados los breakout rooms, pueden ir ya uniéndose a ellos y nos vemos en un momento en la, el sitio ¿verdad? de la práctica. I'm doing great. And you, Sandra? Hello. Oh. Amazing That's day. Pretty nice. Pretty Amazing nice. day. Amazing day. Amazing day. Okay. Who wants to begin? Okay. Who can share the, the screen? Wong, Wong Yu. Who will be Wong Yu? You. I can. Um, you um, can't. Yeah. No. And disable okay. my WhatsApp and, and, and my. Be killing. Emily. Yes. Uh huh. You will be Kelly, and and uh, and Walter will be one Q. You. 
Let's begin. Oh. One, two, three, go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, I don't have my, uh, the screen. Oh, yeah. I receive. Oh. Yeah. I receive right now. Okay, who we'll started? You begin. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want you and Ailey Kelly, I think. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. I'm a star. Okay. So how's how's your French class going? Not bad, but I am finding the pronunciation is difficult. Well, it takes a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing, writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them all things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Mm, maybe I should try something like that. Thank okay, thank you. Okay, now Rosa Maria and Jacqueline. Okay. Sorry, but I haven't imagined. Yeah, uh, a teacher in the sent group? that uh, WhatsApp group. Eh, no funciona mi teléfono, solamente se ve desde la computadora. Ah, no uh, Jacqueline and me then. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. You start, okay. Sandra, please. You me, you begin. I begin. Yes. All right. So, Hi. how's your French class going? No, but. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Um, okay. Uh, here the I'm in real. Or no. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. That's a good idea, but how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words uh, best by writing them on piece on piece of paper and sticking them uh, things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Maybe I should try something like that. Okay. Okay. Next. Okay. Carlos. Carlos and Marta. Okay. Mm, we'll try, Carlos. Okay, so mm. how is your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, it takes a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea, but how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new, new words best by writing them on a piece of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every, every night before I go to sleep. Hmm, maybe I should buy new work best by writing them on a piece of paper and sticking them on scene on my room. I look at the every night before to, uh, I go to sleep. Hmm, maybe I should try something ah! like that. And that's all. Oh. 
I, I think that we have any time to repeat the dialogue. I'm okay okay so um i just wanted to cover this before we go and uh this is the use of something we had there in the conversation when we have by and we have a gerund being used at the same time by plus a gerund is something you do to describe how to do something now, you can use it when you're giving someone instructions or when you're giving someone also advice. Um, we have two, well, three different examples here. And the first one is you could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. So by listening to, it's when you are going to be explaining how to do the specific thing. By listening, by listening to language CDs. Then... Uh, second example would be, I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper. By writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things. Sticking them on things. So, I learn new words best by writing uh, and sticking. Aquí tenemos que este by sí, va a poder cubrir verdad hasta el final de esta oración. Entonces, no es necesario utilizar otra vez and by sticking them on things, sino que solo I learn new words were best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things. Y el último ejemplo que tenemos acá sería the best way to learn slang is not by reading newspapers, but by watching movies. So slang, if you guys don't know, I hope you guys do, are the words that are not properly used in like educational English, but more in everyday english so things that are unofficial to the to the english language now um en un momento vamos a hablar un poquito más acerca de esto quizá no sé bueno ya casi no tenemos tiempo pero no sé si recuerdan que el otro día les estuve comentando acerca de una situación o sea de un un corredor que les decía yo que habla bastante rápido y que es, es difícil entender lo que dice pues aquí tengo un video reciente es apenas de esta semana pasada sí Eh, y pues quisiera que lo escuchen, o sea, no solo les voy a mostrar el video, sino solamente el audio. Quisiera que escuchen, verdad, cuando él, cuando él habla, sí. Uh, and use our straight line speed to defend, but that's all it was. You may turn. Okay, entonces, esa es su, su, su versión, su voz, esa es la forma en la que él habla, ¿sí? Y eso es como su, lo normal, ¿sí? Para él. Pero, no sé, ¿lograron entender parte de lo que dijo? Y no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I understand only, I understand only uh, in two or three uh, Times uh, he said car. Car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. I had to look the, for the lyrics for that to understand everything that he said. See, he's basically just explaining the reason why he wasn't able to finish the race <laughs> in a better position. And he's saying that their car is not capable of running or stay up front. If you guys heard, they, he said that in some point. Um, his car or their car is more for a straight lines. So what they have to do is keep their position and try to uh, make the most out of the straight line. So that's what he's saying. But he's speaking so fast and with so many links or um, in transitional sounds between words that it sounds like it's basically the same sentence. Así que eso es, o sea, eso es la forma en la que algunas personas en Estados Unidos y en Canadá, que es el caso específico de él, o sea, él es canadiense, hablan. Por cierto, se me olvidó. Um, Jacqueline, feliz cumpleaños ahora sí de forma oficial. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy la birthday. No, no Happy birthday. Antes para <laughs> yes. I want a piece of cake. Yes. Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Aunque sea en el <laughs> chat, mande pastelitos. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Okay, um, so, este, entonces, 
en mi caso específico, si hubiesen, eh, bueno, para mí es algo que hasta la fecha todavía trato de recordar y saber qué fue lo que pasó. La prim el primer día que yo estuve en Estados Unidos, estaba en el aeropuerto todavía haciendo una escala y fui al baño. Escuché a un señor hablar en el, en el teléfono y yo no entendí absolutamente nada de lo que dijo. De seguro que yo en ese momento yo quería casi llorar, o sea, porque bueno, en, la, en el intercambio que yo hice, pues... No era mi deseo, digamos, ir, sino que fue más que todo el hecho de que la universidad me eligió y dijeron, queremos que vayas y no sé qué, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo no iba como 100% contento, digamos, o emocionadísimo con la idea, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo estaba como, ¿qué hago aquí? <risa> o sea, porque no entendí ni papas de lo que el señor dijo. Pero ya después, o sea, con el tiempo, sí aprendí un poco más acerca de los acentos, velocidad al hablar y todo... Pero es algo que, o sea, de verdad sorprende. Si ¿sí? después de haber estado aprendiendo inglés y uno se encuentra con casos como este, no toda la gente habla así, porque tampoco es el caso, pero hay personas que sí, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, es algo para lo que nos debemos preparar y solo quería o sea, mostrarles el ejemplo para que, pues sí, ¿verdad? No, no solo creyeran que era, era mentira mía, pero en realidad, o sea, es muy difícil entender a algunas personas cuando hablan. Pero bueno, um, Gracias. Thank you guys very much for your attention and participation. I think it's a little bit late now. However, uh, as I said in the beginning, we're going to keep you posted on what is going to happen if we have a class or no on Friday. Um, but we'll see. So thank you very much. If we don't, well, see you next weekend. If we do, see you Friday. We'll see you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.